A man may die, nations may rise and fall, but an idea lives on. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we stand on the doorstep of a pivotal place in the formation of a legend, the home where John F. Kennedy spent his earliest years. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. JFK, a name that echoes through time. Born in 1917, his story is one that's woven deep into the tapestry of American history. His presidency, brimming with youthful vitality and the audacity of dreams, forever etched in our collective memories. But every great tale has a beginning. For JFK, it was right here behind these very doors. Built in the early 20th century, this colonial revival-style family home was the cradle of JFK's youth, a silent witness to the molding of an icon. His father, Joseph Patrick Kennedy, purchased the Brookline, Massachusetts house in advance of his marriage to Rose Fitzgerald. The plan was to live like a modern family in a time when Americans were turning to the suburbs for more space. His father purchased a Ford Model T to commute to Boston for work, allowing his children to have more space to grow up in outside of the crowded city. As we approach the front door, let's remember that these walls were the canvas for JFK's formative years. To more accurately paint a picture of his time in the house, we will see a mix of new and old photos as we continue inside. Entering his childhood home, we arrive in the stair hall, where we find elements of a clean and simple arts and crafts styling in the unpainted millwork. Turning around to face the door, modern technology was incorporated into the house in the forms of electric lighting, and even a telephone, which would have been considered more novel than useful at the time. In the parlor, a young JFK could listen to his mother playing the piano, and after he had been tucked into bed, his parents would have stayed up talking and reading in this room. The dining room, which was one of the most important rooms in the house, was frequently staged for entertaining, though the table would not have been formally set when it was just the family eating dinner. In this room, Lively conversations would have taken place, perhaps the first conversations which would have piqued JFK's interest in politics and world affairs. His mother Rose frequently said about dinner conversations that history is shaped by those who get their ideas across. Dinner would have been prepared in the kitchen by the Kennedy's two maids, who would wait until the family was seated to bring dinner to the table. Let's return to the entrance hall and pivot around the radiator feeling its warmth rise as we travel up the stairs to the second floor. As we arrive at the second floor stair landing, we feel carpet beneath our feet, a soft surface for the young Kennedy children to run around and play. First we will find Joseph and Rose's bedroom with two separate beds, something which was common for the time. This is the room in which Rose gave birth to JFK and his other siblings for that matter. JFK would have spent his first years sleeping in the nursery's bassinet, surrounded by all the toys a toddler of the time could wish for. In this photo, we can more clearly see the lively wallpaper, featuring a marching band with JFK's christening gown and cap on display. Down the hall, we will come across the guest bedroom, which was eventually converted into an extra bathroom. Though we can look back in time to see the Kennedy's original bathroom, and in the newer photo, we can notice the tile mosaic border which outlines the perimeter of the room. After only a few years of living in the home, the Kennedys sold it and moved to Riverdale, New York. Traveling forward in time, skipping past JFK's achievements of launching the first space program, and his scandalous affair with Marilyn Monroe, and just after his assassination in Dallas, Texas, we will land back in Brookline, Massachusetts in 1966. Rose repurchased JFK's childhood home and embarked on a three-year journey to restore it to how it appeared in 1917, when JFK was born. During this time, in 1967, she donated the house to the National Park Service to serve as a memorial and house museum dedicated to her son. She filled the house museum with items and furniture from JFK's youth, to the best of her memory, recreating it as closely as it was during the time in which the Kennedys called it home. This house, a testament to JFK's beginnings, speaks volumes about his journey, a journey that changed the face of America and the world. It is here that a boy first dreamt of the stars and later reached to them as a man. 
Today, the John Fitzgerald Kennedy National Historic Site is scheduled to reopen later this year following renovations and maintenance, ensuring it will stand for the enjoyment of future generations. I hope you enjoyed this journey through time. Comment below which room or detail was your favorite, and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.